Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for August 7 through to August 11. A powerful 100 MeV proton burst, an M9.3 class solar flare, and earthbound coronal mass ejections are expected to cause a significant geomagnetic disturbance over the next 24 hours. And it is expected that during this watch period, the significant potential of a 7.2 magnitude earthquake and some volcanic activity is possible. Now look at the latest information from Cactus, where we get to see that the M9.3 class solar flare that occurred yesterday has produced a powerful full halo coronal mass ejection heading Earth's way. And it is expected that this coronal mass ejection will hit the Earth's magnetic field on August the 7th. That means that we have three coronal mass ejections expected to hit the Earth's magnetic field on August 5, 6 and 7. And this should produce significant seismic activities felt here on Earth. Now looking at the latest telemetry from ACE, and we get to see an important change on this data service where solar wind temperature, solar wind speed and solar wind density have increased simultaneously. That's an indication that the coronal mass ejection has hit the Earth's magnetic field and it does seem that it's a fairly weak coronal mass ejection and that's the first of three that's expected to hit the Earth's magnetic field in the coming days. Now looking at Signet Streamer and it's showing the coronal mass ejections in an animated view as released from the solar corona. And this is quite interesting on this service. They are showing us that all three coronal mass ejections have caught up with each other. And that would mean that one larger coronal mass ejection will hit the Earth's magnetic field. I'm not too sure if this is the case, but we won't have to wait too long to see if this does happen. And here is the latest proton flux information. And we get to see significant change on this service. What we see is the M6 and M9.3 class events that occurred yesterday produced an impulsive or sudden event and this is indicative of a fairly large eruption that occurred on the solar corona. We're now looking at the KP index and currently conditions are extremely quiet but over the next 24 to 36 hours it is expected that we may be receiving a K6 or a K7 and that's equivalent to a G2 or G3 class geomagnetic storm. Now looking at the solar terrestrial activity report via solon.info and we get to see a southern hemisphere coronal hole formation and numbered as CH469. This coronal hole formation is moving in the earth facing position at the time of this recording and the only area that I see of significance as this is a poorly constituted coronal hole would be around the equator region that will be extending down from around 6 degrees to 9 degrees south latitude. Now looking at the SDO 304 angstrom and focusing on the southern hemisphere and this coronal hole formation. Now this coronal hole is poorly constituted but there are two regions contained that are of interest and there's also some interesting active regions that have spawned and they are fairly weak active regions but they do give credence to this coronal hole formation that could produce at least one significant earthquake during this watch. Now using Solar Monitor's 193 angstrom I'm going to plot some regions that I feel could be at risk for a significant earthquake for both hemispheres. For the southern hemisphere I feel the main area of concern is just under the equator region around 6 to 9 degrees south latitude. My number one area of concern for this watch is the region of southeastern or southwestern Indonesia or more specifically the region of southern Sumatra or the boundary of the Banda Sea. I do feel there is a significant potential of a 7.2 earthquake in and around one of these regions which is centered 6 to 9 degrees south latitude. And my second area of concern is for the Solomon Islands stretching up towards Papua New Guinea. And my final area of concern is for the region of central or northern Peru. Now looking at the AIA-171 angstrom and looking at the northern hemisphere and this coronal fissure that extends up from 43 to 45 degrees north latitude, I do feel there is a potential of a significant earthquake in and around this region. My number one area of concern for a significant earthquake for the northern hemisphere are for the regions of Greece or western Turkey. I do feel that a significant lunar modulation will swing and also coronal mass ejections indicate a possible event in the Europe region. And my second area of concern for the Northern Hemisphere are for the border regions of China and Russia, or more specifically the Jilin China region. And my final area of concern for the Northern Hemisphere is the region of Hokkaido, Japan. We're now looking at a significant ionospheric anomaly that was recorded a few days ago. The main area up around the Ryukyu Islands registered a 14 on the service. 
also a significant region, was down towards northern and southern Sumatra. And this is the area that's been popping up over the last few months or so, and it's worth keeping a close notice of, as Krakatau is also in this region. We're now looking at the outgoing long-wave radiation anomaly. This is showing parts of the globe that could be susceptible of some significant seismic events based on radiation signatures. And the main areas this week come from Puerto Rico, Papua New Guinea, Kazakhstan, and also South Africa. These regions are the main areas of focus for this watch. And that's my Volcano and Earthquake watch for August 5, 2011. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.